then Jesus calmed the storm with God's guidance. But when Jesus calmed the storm, it wasn't solely an act of power over nature. It was an act of rebuking the chaotic forces. The sea was a symbol for destruction and chaos in the Old Testament. For example, in Job chapter 38 and Psalm chapter 74, God is praised for dividing the sea by his might and breaking the heads of the dragons in the waters. So we can definitely see that in various parables, Jesus' power in, rebu in rebuking the sea and taking control of destructive waters was eminent. In the Gospel reading, we can see the contrast between people of limited trust in God opposed to somebody of strong faith in God. During the angry storm, the disciples feared for their lives, questioning God's presence in the midst of the environmental chaos. But on the contrary, Jesus might have been busy buzzing sleep. He was calm, cool, and collected during the storm because he trusted God's action and support was on the way. His sleep represents his faith in God, not oblivious absence. So the, so the disciples mistook his peaceful sleep for an act of absence. They failed to realize that in the center of chaos, God is present. God is awake, and God is creating his action plan. As stated, God permitted this test of the disciples' faith during difficult times. So, my question to you is, have any of you gone through challenges and questioning God's presence during times of chaos? Let's be true today. Is that okay? Because I know I have. And if we look deep within ourselves, we can all say that as imperfect humans, we question the Lord's presence at some point in our life. And I want to reinforce that in the past we may have failed when our faith has been tested. However, going forward, through prayer and acknowledgement of His presence, we can overcome when times of testing and chaos come. I want to take you in a time in my life where I once questioned God's presence. So, in November of 2016, was when my dad first told me that my mom was ill. And of course, I felt angry and scared. And I used to wonder, why God? Why would you place this disease on my mom? I questioned him. And I wanted to know where he was in the midst of all this chaos. But I started to pray for her health, and that really helped get through it all. My mom was going to have surgery, and a few weeks later, it went smoothly. Um, to this day, she's healthy, and I thank God for that. The experience brought me closer to God. After that experience, Nobody can convince me that there's no God. But you know what I realized the most? I realized that once you pray and believe, expecting the best outcome, it gives God the capacity to move. It gives Him more willingness to show up and show out in your life. It gives Him ease in healing the wounds, solving life's disconnects, and calming down life's storms. I'm sure many of us are facing challenges in our lives. I know what you adults are thinking. You haven't seen problems yet. <laughs> what problems? But many you face peer pressure, relationship issues, racial profiling, anxiety, depression, school transitioning. So for example, those going from high school to university, middle school to high school, uh, school debt, and many more. And adults, I haven't forgotten about you, um, adults face a lot of stress in their lives, depression, anxiety, financial issues, parenting and relationship issues, and many more. So as we can see, everyone has gone through obstacles in their lives, times of chaos, times of crisis. However, God permits these times of challenges in our lives when our faith 
may be tested. God would never throw obstacles in your way that you cannot handle. Some of the greatest challenges are given to those who can handle them the most. I'm sure you've heard that. In Drake's God's Plan song, this guy they interviewed said, Thank God by what's happened. It might not be good, but thank God. This is the kind of attitude we should all strive for in the center of chaos. It proves your faith. It shows that with God you can overcome times of testing, and you've recognized His presence in the mess. So if you take anything from today, it's these five words. Let go and let God. God. Right. My challenge to you for the week and going forward is to pray for yourselves and others who may be experiencing hardship too. Because prayer is one of the most overlooked, powerful tools to help conquer challenges. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and be not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Which is taken from Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. So to conclude, I want to challenge you all to do your part. Put your full hearted trust in God, and I'm confident he will help you conquer life's greatest challenges. Thank you.